when you guys have a problem with the fractions, again, the, pro the process is going to be exactly the same. Um, but in this example, we got to simplify. Well, we can't combine like terms, because if you guys remember fractions, you can't combine fractions when they have common denominators, right? So I can't combine these. If they have the same denominator, then I could simply combine them. But anyways, I don't even like fractions anyhow. I want to get rid of fractions. I don't like fractions at all. So the best way to get rid of fractions, like how we did on that one example, remember we had r divided by 20. 20 was in the denominator. To get rid of 20, we multiply by 20. Well, here we have different denominators. So we, can't, we don't want to multiply by um, you know, 4 and then multiply by 7. But what we do want to do is multiply by the common denominator, what we call the least common denominator. So we want to find the smallest number that 7 and 4 both divide into. So to find that number, we can just list the multiple 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 4, 8, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. And what you guys see is the smallest number that both 7 and 4 divide into is 28. That is what we call our least common denominator, our least common multiple. What you're going to want to do is multiply everything by 28. Actually, forget the parentheses. So let's multiply. You're going to want to multiply every single quantity times 28. Now, the reason why we want to choose a number that 7 and 4 both divide into is because rather than dividing into this, think about it. Does 7 divide into 28? Yeah. yeah. How many times? 4. So we have 4 times 5x plus 1. Does 4 divide into 28? How many times? times? Close. One more. Seven. So we have minus seven. And then that's going to still be multiplied by 2x minus 6. And then that's going to be greater than or equal to negative 4 um, times 28 is 28. That's going to be 56. So that's going to be 112. And that's a negative. OK? Now we apply distributive property. Multiply, 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 multiply. So therefore, we get 20x plus 4. Make sure this is a negative 7. So that's a negative 14x. Um, that's going to be plus 42 is greater than or equal to a negative 112. Does everybody follow me? Did I go too fast? Now, again, notice that the variables and numbers are on the same side, right? So we can combine them. We don't need to use properties of quality. We combine them. So 20x minus 14x is 6x. And then 4 plus 40, 42 is going to be 46. Oops. That's greater than or equal to negative 112. Now, do you guys feel confident you can solve the rest of this? It's a little bit bigger numbers, but hopefully you should be able to do this. So therefore, um, I'm going to minus 46 minus 46. Um, basically, when you have a negative number minus a, a, minusing another number, it's like adding it. So that's going to be 158. 6x is greater than or equal to 1 negative. Let's do 60, 120, 180. How many times does it go into it? Say it goes in, no, it doesn't go into that. Does it? Not huh? Not no. no, not evenly. Um, yes. Let me just take a calculation. I'm getting 79 over 3 as the reduced fraction, which is approximately 26.33. Twenty-six, twenty-six point three three. So, one thing I want you guys to understand about when you have a decimal, that is okay. It is okay to have a decimal and graph it. There's nothing wrong with that. You look at your number line. Now, it's seventy-nine point three is the fraction. Here's your decimal. Can we put the number on twenty-six? Can we put the circle on twenty-six? No. no it's point three three. Can we put it on twenty-seven? No. So what we'll do is we'll say here's twenty-six. Here's 27. 
here's 28, here's 25. 26.33 is in between 26 and 27, right? It's in between them. So don't put it on one of the hash marks. Put it in between. Then it's less, it's greater than or equal to, so that's going to be a solid. It's going to be closed. And then what are the numbers that are greater than 26, to the right or to the left? Right. To the right. Make sense? 